Join me as we turn our hearts and mind of God to listen to beautiful, meditative music.
Another part of me is somehow surprised it has arrived so soon, even though the past 10 months have felt like 10, 10 years, a decade. Either way, I am not sure I have ever been so happy as an adult to see the holidays show up. There's so much unrest in our lives on so many levels that it seems especially good to have finally entered the season of peace, hope, joy, and love, the season of the promise of what can be. This time of year when humanity lives into that promise by acting lovingly and thoughtfully, almost as a matter of course. We can all use the inspiration cheering up love and thoughtfulness that we can get. And the holidays certainly offer much of all of that in the way of stories and sights and sounds and acts of goodness. And the wonder of it is that that's all brought to us by humankind. Humankind turning toward the incarnation of God who is love and lifting up the lighted, lighter side of living in the darkness of winter and in the darkness of life. We live into the promise by being the promise, bringing so much more love and light into one another's lives this time of year. This inspires me every year. It gives me extra hope. And I hope it gives you hope to hear in the long, dark shadow that has been hovering over us most of 2020. Advent, of course, has long been the season that anticipates and prepares us for Christmas, the day we celebrate the first arrival of the incarnation of God in the form of a human named Jesus. And that first Christmas, way, way back when, also arrived in a very difficult age and with much longer, darker shadows. Jesus was born into and lived out his life in times and places far more turbulent than 2020. Disease ran rampant, not just for months, but for years and years with little knowledge of causes and cures and no vaccines were ever on the horizon. There was very little if any governmental compassion for masses afflicted by the disease or those being oppressed. In the first century, Palestine, where Jesus lived, was occupied by a conquering nation that took what it wanted from the land and the people and sought to control virtually every aspect of life. Rome stifled dissent. It crushed the poor, which included most everyone, it enslaved people, and it maintained peace with violence and might. Roman armies and Rome's appointed overseers and henchmen sought to infiltrate all of society. Rome controlled local kings like Herod and governors like Pilate, and even religious institutions like the temple and the hierarchy, like high priests. The truth of the matter is, when Jesus arrived, much of life stunk to high heaven. And so it's probably no accident that we have this gospel story of high heaven sending Jesus to arrive amidst the mock and the filth of a stable. As a metaphor fits the time he arrived in, it was a terrible mass. And amazingly, from that mass out grew the great plotters of Jesus' way way of living into the truth and light and love that is God's call to all of us. And jumping ahead 2,000 years to 2020, we find ourselves in a time that feels like a mess to a big mess. We are tired and we are weary from all that's unfolded as COVID has relentlessly haunted our lives and the economy and our nation has had so much political unrest and division and ineffective leadership at multiple levels, which has left all of us really, regardless of partisan preferences. There may be no major military war afoot or an overwhelming oppressive force like Rome crushing most of the citizenry day in and day out, but there is much, much violence in words and in actions. 
And for a number of people, especially the marginalized, it can be as daunting as living in ancient Rome. And for the rest of it, it may not be as bad as Rome, but it is still a very disconcerting, disturbing, and disoriented time to feel threatened. And as a consequence, there is little or no peace. We find ourselves like those who first anticipated Jesus' arrival, waiting to be safe on this lesser way of being, waiting for a Prince of Peace to bring in the reign of Christ. We long for the great promise of Jesus' way of truth and light and love. That promise is the good news. The bad news, however, is that we will wait in vain if we are expecting the Prince of Peace to supernaturally intervene like a superhero. The reign of Christ, the way of Jesus, requires those of us who are on that way, the subjects of Christ, us, to do the work needed for God's realm to come about, for Christ to reign. We are the ones who must disrupt the status quo and intervene with love. I point out every advent that these holidays prove that we can do it. We amp up love this time of year and it makes a world of difference. And that is the good news part in play. It is the promise unfolding. And see, unlike first century Palestine, Jesus' life and death and continuing experiential reality give us something the ancients did not have. Among many other things, Jesus' existence caused and causes this annual season love fest, which evidences how successful human intervention with love can be. This time of year, you set aside the more standoffish and fend for yourself cultural ethos of the other 11 months. And we replace it with loving our neighbors. We aim for peace for everyone. And we do it with good cheer, with gifts, with donations, with uplifting messages, and music, decor, with stories. And most of all, we do it with good and loving conduct. The truth is we act more like Jesus. We follow his way in Advent and Christmas. And, we, and what we do, you know what? It makes a difference what we do in the holiday season. All of it brings us closer to the heavenly host proclamation of peace on earth, the will to all. And it is to all that the peace is promised and Proclaim to all. As the angel put it in our lesson, it is brought as good news of great joy for all the people. I know that sometimes, even often, it may not seem like it, but slowly, slowly, over time, that loving stuff we do this time of year in the holidays and response to Christmas has blended into the rest of the year. Bid by bit, humanity has inched toward betterment as a whole. The type of terror and cruel oppression that Rome governed with is no longer the mainstay of nations. Indeed, much of that conduct is now criminal, criminal, under international law. And while there are still cruel and terrible government actions, much of the world and many governments and leaders espouse the ideals of ending it and keeping it from rising. There are varying degrees of success, much backsliding, but the oppression of marginalized groups, including women and children, those of differing race, religion, ethnicity, and sexuality, those oppressions all have targets on their back. Slavery is abhorred and banned and rarely officially allowed. Happens, sadly, still, I know, but most of the world seems to now ache as God has ached all along for it to end. And there's a long list of other threats and oppressions, and much of the world is continuing to work.
work on breaking down sexism and racism, heterosexism, poverty. Justice is being sought. Kindness is being loved. Oppression and cruelty are targeted for demise by many, many people and nations and leaders. And it has taken far, far too long to end them, but it's happening incrementally. And another bit of proof is the way most of the people in the world have worked together to help end the COVID crisis. Healthcare and other essential workers have tended to the well-being of others most of 2020. Many of the rest of us have helped too, but following protocols, trying to not spread and not get the illness. The bottom line is if we look, we can find the promise of peace set in motion that first Christmas is continuing to unfold. We have a lot, a lot of work still to do. This love fest stuff we do at Advent is both that work and the promise being fulfilled. We need to do it now, for sure, but we also need to bring as much of it as we can forward into 2021 from December, from January to December, all the way through. The promise of the season is not miracles magically appearing. The promise is as many of us as possible acting in concert toward well-being, toward peace on earth, goodwill to all. Do that during the holidays. We need to do it all year. We can and we should. Advent, Christmas, God and Jesus all call us to it in the days and months and years ahead. All of them. Peace on earth depends on it. Peace on earth depends on it. Thank you.